Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about high blood pressure. Now, if your doctor finds you have high blood pressure, you'll probably be put on blood pressure medicine and or diuretics to bring the blood pressure down. So these are life-saving medications for sure, but you still always want to make sure that you treat the underlying cause of the high blood pressure. Otherwise, uh, you might not be getting to the root cause. You might not be able to fully fix it. You're just suppressing the symptoms. Now, there are several underlying imbalances which can contribute to high blood pressure. And most people with this condition will usually have more than one of these problems, which they need to address. First, it's important that you understand about the physical channels in the body. These are the channels which carry blood, like the arteries and other channels which carry toxins, food, tears, sweat, lymphatic fluids, like that. Now, if these physical channels shrink down, get clogged or inflamed, then the blood pressure will go up, kind of like a garden hose whose pressure will go up if you step on it. So if you need to avoid the foods then that will shrink the channels, which are the nightshade vegetables. These are eggplant, bell peppers, tomatoes, and white potatoes. They contain nicotine, which shrinks all the body's physical channels, including the blood vessels, causing the blood pressure to go up. And of course, you should avoid smoking cigarettes because they also contain nicotine. Avoid the channel clogging foods for the same reason, which are chocolate, cacao, unfermented soy like tofu, soy milk, and edamame, hard aged cheeses, nut butters like peanut butter, sunflower seed butter, almond butter, winter squashes, bananas, mushrooms, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, and the heavy meats like the red meats like pork, sausage, beef, veal, bacon, ham, pepperoni, and even the deli meats. And finally, avoid the foods which burn the channels like onions, garlic, and vinegar. If you want a sour taste, put fresh squeezed lime on your food because it turns alkaline right away once it comes into the body. Next, you should understand thoroughly how a deficiency of magnesium could also elevate your blood pressure and how supplementing with it helps the blood pressure to go back down. We give it transdermally through the skin because it doesn't always digest well. It can go through the digestive tract too quickly and cause diarrhea. We give it as an abiyanga oil, which means a massage oil to be used on the entire body. And we also have lotions and creams, which are used on more specific parts of the body. Magnesium is in fact always used in emergency rooms and hospitals to lower blood pressure. Now, magnesium will get depleted with stress if you drink fluoridated water, or if you use dental products which contain fluoride, or if you consume alcohol, and really just about every pharmaceutical depletes the body of magnesium. A high protein diet can also deplete magnesium, as well as high doses of vitamin D. Now, there's two reasons why a magnesium deficiency can cause high blood pressure. First, it's because there are three layers to the walls of your arteries. There's an outer layer, a middle layer, and an inner layer. The middle layer is the largest, and it's basically composed of muscle and elastin. Now, the muscles pump the blood through, and the elastin layer is just like a rubber band. It creates elasticity within the artery walls. And this is important because the magnesium in this layer keeps the muscles relaxed, which keeps the arteries dilated, and it keeps the blood pressure down at the same time. And the magnesium in the elastin layer keeps it very pliable, which helps keep, lets the arteries expand when the heart beats, which will keep the blood pressure down also. You know, when you feel the pulse of someone who's in their 20s, the arteries feel really pliable, like rubber bands, but they feel really stiff and hard in an older person's pulse. And this is because if the magnesium goes low, the calcium can infiltrate and start to deposit in the inner walls of the arteries, which will harden them. And if the arteries get hard, they won't give when the heart beats and the pressure can go up. But as the person takes magnesium over time, the vessel walls will slowly soften back up. You could feel it in the pulse. This is because the magnesium can displace the calcium back out of the artery walls, allowing them to become pliable again, like someone in their 20s even though they might be 80 years old. We also know that stress causes a lot of high blood pressure, but here's why. 
When we're stressed, our adrenal glands secrete cortisol, which immediately shrinks down the physical channels, which causes the blood pressure to go up. This is why we use ashwagandha, because it prevents the release of too much cortisol when we're stressed, which will help keep our blood pressure down even though we're going through stress. Cortisol also dumps magnesium out of the body, causing the blood pressure to go up as the arteries lose their elasticity and they start to stiffen up. Now, the next factor which can raise your blood pressure are the highly processed table salts that we use. They're composed primarily of sodium and chloride, which can increase the blood pressure if used over a lifetime. My teacher, Vaidra Mishra, went out of his way to get us this white Himalayan salt, which he calls Soma salt. And it has all the minerals in it, not just sodium and chloride, and it won't heat your liver the way the pink Himalayan salt can. In fact, the Shirak Sanghita, the ancient central reference text of Ayurveda, lists eight edible and beneficial kinds of salt coming from the Himalayas. But it names the best among them Soma Lavan, or Soma Salt. In fact, Soma Salt is described in chapter 27, verse 300, as this. Tasty, which is Rakamam. Deepanam, which means increasing the digestive fires. Rishyam, which means supporting Shukradatu, which is the reproductive tissue. Chakchushya, which means it's supporting the longevity of the eyes by cooling the liver. Avidahi Cha, not creating a digestive imbalance due to excessive heating quality and not causing retention of toxins like the other salts do. Tridoshagnam, which means pacifying all three doshas, vada, pitta, and kapha, and having somewhat sweet taste, and lavano noctanam, the best of all the salts. So soma salt is a cooling rock salt, as the name soma implies. In nature, soma represents the cooling, nurturing elements. This is a unique quality for a salt because most salts have a hot agni quality, as we call it. Only soma salt has the cooling soma quality needed to balance it. Soma salt is extracted from the mountains of northwest India in the historic land of Sindh. And in Vajamishra's family lineage of Shaka Vansya Ayurveda, this salt was known as the queen of salts due to its high mineral content and its unparalleled somogenic qualities. Now, in addition, high vada, or functioning in a state of fight or flight all the time, can also shrink the channels, and high pitta, or the fire element in the body, over time can heat up the blood, causing it to pound against the walls of the arteries. In fact, one of the most common causes of high blood pressure is due to skipping and delaying meals, because the liver is a very hot organ containing five digestive fires, and it needs a constant supply of food to burn up. So if you become hungry and you don't eat, the liver's fires will escape from the liver and heat up the blood, again, causing the blood to pound against the walls of the arteries, raising the blood pressure. Listen to the free classes on my website where I explain what these elements are. These are known as vada, pitta, and kapha, and how they govern the body's processes and how to keep them in balance. Now, if you're overweight, you should try to learn better eating habits to keep your weight down because the high body weight can cause high blood pressure too. In fact, many of my patients' high blood pressure came down just by losing weight without any of the herbs or any other treatments. And finally, we do have a very specific herb to use for high blood pressure. But first, before I give it to our patients, I make sure all of these other issues are addressed or else it alone might not work it might not be enough to lower the blood pressure. I'm not going to divulge the name of this herb here because it's a very powerful herb and you should be monitored by your Ayurvedic practitioner while you're on it. So I hope you found this information beneficial as you try to learn ways to manage your high blood pressure. Thank you.